Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I want to talk about the UK talent report that came out from a company called Understanding Recruitment and it talks about the landscape of .NET engineering uh, in 2021 in the UK. Now I understand that the majority of my viewership is actually from the US, India and Europe and UK is third but um, it's not the highest by no means. So this might not directly apply to you but the reason why I'm making this is so you can have a point of comparison from the place where you are right now but you might also want to come to the UK to work. It's good to know how things are here and what salary to ask for because we will cover that, uh, where it's worth working for and that sort of thing. So I think there's value in watching this and knowing about this even though you're not in the UK. Now, the reason why I'm covering this in the first place is not because I'm affiliated with this company in any way, shape or form. The reason why I cover this is because as an engineering manager who has seen salaries and uh, companies that use .NET in the UK and all that, I think that this report actually makes a very fair point and it's fairly accurate. I'm going to link it in the description as well in case you want to check it out on your own. Uh, but I'm also going to give you my take talking through uh, the report. I won't cover everything. I'm going to cover what I find interesting. So without any further ado, let's go straight into the video. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So first things first, please update your logo. This is a bit outdated. But other than that, we get a brief overview. We don't get a number on the actual sample used for this video. The interesting thing is that they say they used um, their own database and they surveyed uh, people to, to get those numbers. I question some of them and I'm going to talk the, the ones I question, um, but in its majority it sounds like the sample size is big enough to actually justify the, the report, so I'm okay with that. Uh, some things mentioned at the beginning, a 3% increase on LinkedIn for .NET and c engineers. Now, not everybody's on LinkedIn, um, even though the majority of people are. 3 increase sounds a bit small, especially with a framework like .NET 5 being around, which is, you know, and .NET Core in general uh, being huge. Uh, but I can understand how in these trying times with the pandemic, uh, people weren't really eager to jump from, let's say, Spring Boot in Java to .NET uh, 5, you know, if it ain't broke, don't, don't fix it sort of thing. So I can understand that. The interesting thing is that .NET Core saw a 48% growth and React, of course, because React is very, very, very nice. No mention of Blazor in this uh, in this report. I'd be interested to see that. I know there's not many jobs about Blazor yet, um, and 38% in microservices. So this is very interesting because people are actually moving from monoliths and other types of architecture to microservices, and they're using .NET Core. Uh, and I think the fact that this is a cross-platform framework has actually really made a difference and it shows where the talent is located uh, surprise the majority of it is in London and the thing is that not only the majority is in London but jobs in London are also higher paid than other locations people have problems with that uh, and I can understand why but the truth is cost of living really affects that now with remote working and full remote working this argument goes away and I totally get that so it's interesting to see now that more companies are moving to a more remote or fully remote approach um, how salaries will change throughout the country we haven't seen a change yet since this is the first year basically but i'm interested in seeing this report in a year from now now who is employing the talent this is a very important slide the numbers you see next to uh, the company is from what i understand the people they hired this year because I know working at checkout.com, for example, and having worked at ASOS as well, that there's no way they only have uh, that amount of people. Um, I think just ASOS had like 400 engineers back in 2017 or 18 when I was working there. Uh, so I think this is how many they hired. It doesn't account for how many left, uh, but this is the number. Now, I question a couple of things. I question Lloyd's and Facebook, especially Facebook being that high, because I don't think they hire that many .NET engineers. I know they use C Sharp in some VR and AR stuff that they have here in the UK, but I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on it. Um, but I can see that from Lloyd's and, and, and below, this all makes sense um, to me. Uh, you know, Amazon, um, maybe, I don't know. Um, but yeah, companies like Just Eat, um, again, check out the company I work for, ASOS, a company I worked for before. Um, Microsoft also. I don't know if it's 104, that sounds a bit excessive, but and then Bet365 Sky. This is basically this slide shows you what the highest or top companies 
uh, you can work for in the UK in the .NET landscape really. So if you're looking to apply for a .NET job that is paying generously, this is where you would be looking at. And ideally, you know, I work here. If you want to work with me, check us out. Not sponsored. Now, the more interesting slide is the top 20 fastest changing uh, teams. And this actually is very eye opening because you can see how fintech is actually growing so much in the UK. For example, um, the company I work for, check out, we hired 65 people. Apparently, I don't know if that's the actual number. So a 91% increase. Um, but we weren't bottlenecked by positions. We had plenty of positions. We we're bottlenecked by at the talent pool. Uh, it's just very hard to hire engineers, uh, especially senior engineers. So this number would be way, way higher if we could. But you can see like Clearbank, uh, Moonpig, uh, so many companies, you know, Tesco as well. Uh, Tesco also ran a very nice um, campaign, well, nice, a, a marketing campaign for their career website and nationwide. So it's interesting to see that you know, there's there's other companies as well that are really investing in .NET and the fact that you don't see, for example, Tesco in that list here means that they're investing more in .NET well and before they didn't really and all these other companies. Um, and, and being new companies, it shows that the technology is actually used to build new stuff, which I think that's what I find important. I don't really find important in migrating to it if you're an established company. Um, the key is to get people to use it from the get-go. For me, the key is to actually get .NET to be used for things that are starting now and it actually shows here. So I'm very glad that this happens. Interesting that Unity Technologies as well uh, is hiring so heavily, 60% increase um, year to year. So very interesting statistics here. FinTech is also booming in the UK. So if you're looking to get into a sector that is very, very promising in the UK, with FinTech, you can't really go wrong. Challenging sector, very interesting though. Almost 80% of the respondents said that they have experience with a code uh, in front end. But what's interesting is that 89% said that they're happy with the tech they're using, which is .NET. Like, that is a very high percentage for satisfaction on a piece of software. Like, how many times do you just go out for a pint in the pub or whatever, and you're like, oh, I hate, I don't know, AWS or whatever. People don't really say that for .NET. And I think this law for the framework, which is now being pushed from Microsoft even more, um, is really paying off to get it adopted because people that really feel strongly about it uh, can get it pushed and used and give it the exposure it deserves because it also has bad reputation historically for being a closed source system uh, and many people still think that .NET is a closed source system that is not cross-platform. So yeah, there's that. And then the cloud distribution is interesting um, but kind of predictable. Uh, Azure is the majority because it's just so friendly with .NET, AWS is second and then like who is using Google Cloud? I mean, come on. And here is the big thing, the salary guide. Now, disclaimer here, because you might see that and you're like, I'm not making that much. Uh, why am I not, not making that much? That's bullshit. It's not bullshit, um, especially talking about the companies that we had above, um, but it varies based on a couple of things. And it's things I've talked about on the channel before, and I want you to understand because it really, really makes a difference. Cloud experience and DevOps tools knowledge. like. To me, there is nothing that you can do now. Like you can spend you spend a year reading reading about the compiler in C sharp and learning how to do right zero location code with the most advanced. Like that won't add value or not add enough value to you to ask for a high salary. DevOps tooling, no knowledge of DevOps, Terraform, Plumi, whatever. You know, so many things on templates, anything. And cloud experience, AWS and Azure, don't really bother with Google Cloud. I mean, not many people use that. So you're limiting yourself by learning about that. But learning about those two things, you absolutely will add tons of value, like orders of magnitude based on what you would add if you just became too good in .NET Core, let's say. So that's my advice. And now let's look at the salaries. So we have graduate and junior, which is post-graduation to two years of experience, uh, mid-level, uh, 2.5 years to five years. We're going to talk about those. Senior, lead, technical architect, and development manager. Naming type of thing there is a bit weird because like lead developer, technical architect, and development manager could be a bit blended in one way or another. 
but I'll just roll with it. Um, what I want to say is that junior for two years is a bit excessive. I think one year being a junior is enough, and then you go mid. So mid is like one, two, three, one, two, five, maybe. Um, then senior, three, two, whatever. And then if you choose to be a technical architect, lead, development manager, that's fine. Now, 30 to 45 sounds very reasonable to me. I actually started significantly lower than this as a junior developer back in 2015. So there's a bit of Nick trivia. Uh, some earning an excess of 60,000. Maybe on hedge funds, I don't know where you'd make 60,000 60, as, a, as a junior developer. Um, but this sounds very, especially grouping graduates and juniors. That's, that sounds very reasonable. Then mid 40 to 70. Again, I think that's very reasonable based on what I've seen. Some earning an excess of 80. I can see that happening as well, especially when the company is talking uh, above. Um, 65 to 100 for seniors. Again, this is these are, those are reasonable numbers. 120 is a bit excessive. Maybe hedge funds again. Um, but yeah, I don't think this takes into account bonds, by the way, or anything. This is just base salary. Uh, lead 75 to 130, 145. We, we're treading towards like the more niche to get to be on the higher range, but I can see like 75 to 120 uh, for lead developers. Um, and then same for technical architects and development managers. It, it does make sense. Um, and obviously you don't have people like VPs or uh, CTOs that are even higher than that. So net engineers do actually make a significant amount of money and everything after you know senior type of thing you could be in the one percent um and then more than six figures so it's an interesting uh career path and an interesting technology and you can see that there are actually uh, companies that pay a significant amount of money i can confirm that these numbers are true they're not bullshit um and i know from personal experience and i do think that if you are to move to a career in .NET, I would recommend checking one of the companies on the list above, which will offer you one of those numbers. And then last but not least, what degrees do they have? Uh, Doctor of Philosophy, uh, Masters and Bachelors. I personally don't care about degrees. If you can code, I can hire you. And that's that. Uh, I know many people that don't actually have even a relevant degree at all. Like it seems like history, philosophy, and what's the other one? Psychology. I've seen psychology a lot. Um, it's like the thing that engineers do before they become engineers is weird. But yeah, that's that. Now that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my patrons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.